The Modular General Purpose Tent System, or MGPTS, Type 3 from Eureka, is a patent-pending, internal frame-supported modular structure. This tent, like all MGPTS tents, is issued in three sizes, small, medium, and large. This tent can also be complexed in various combinations of length and to other types of equipment, like a plenum, vestibule, and chemical biological liner, to name a few. The following information section will show you the setup procedures for the MGPTS Type 3. Chapter 1 Laying Out the Fabric Sections First, select an area to erect the tent. Ensure that the area will be large enough for the tent and guy ropes that will be erected. This area should be clear of trees, rocks, debris, and overhead wires. Choose a relatively flat area. The ground should not vary by more than 6 inches. Locate the transport bags containing the fabric for the size of the tent that is being set up. For the medium MGPTS, you will need two end fabric sections and one mid fabric section. Transport each required fabric section into the area where the tent will be erected. Lay the bags for the end sections on the ends and the midsection bag in the middle of the area where you will be erecting the tent. The transport bags are labeled on the outside of the bag. The labels show the contents, the loaded weight, and the number of personnel required to lift it. Unfold each mid-fabric section and end section so that the inside, white side, is down and the green or tan side is up. Place these sections in the center of the area where the tent is to be set up. Fold the side walls and the end walls of the mid and both end sections under the roof section so that only the roof portions are exposed. This will allow easier access to the pole attachment points. Position the end sections on either side of the mid section so that the becket laces align. Lay the tent out flat. Find the four large snap hooks at the edge of the end section and midsection roofs on the underside of the tent. Connect the two snap hooks at the ridge. Next, connect the snaps on the lace line. It is very important that these snap hooks are connected now. That way, you know this step is complete and it helps align the tent properly. Next, Pull the one and a half inch web pull loop through the big grommet at the perimeter. Connect the D-ring on the one inch strap at the eave to the adjoining section's snap hook. Make sure that the D-ring strap is below the one and a half inch web pull loop. Find the becket lace at one end of the roof. You may start at either end of the roof. It is important to start at an end and not at the center. Lace the fabric sections together by inserting the first rope loop on the roof section through the first small grommet on the adjoining roof section. Loops always enter the white side of the fabric and exit on the green or tan side. Pull the loops tight. Continue lacing from one side to the other. At the end, 
Tie off the last becket lace by inserting the next to the last becket lace through the loop of the last lace. Then pull the next to the last becket lace back towards the ridge and tie off with a half hitch knot. Next, pull the one and a half inch web pull loop through the big grommet at the perimeter. Connect the D-ring on the one inch strap at the eave to the adjoining section's snap hook. Make sure that the D-ring strap is below the one and a half inch web pull loop. Next, fold one flap over the becket lace and pull the one and a half inch web pull loop through the slit in the flap. Fold the other flap over the first flap and pull the one and a half inch web pull loop through the slit in the flap. Locate the plastic buckle and connect the two ends. Continue for the full length of the flap and over the tent top. Repeat this procedure for all the lace lines. Now with one person at each end of the tent, stretch the fabric tight to remove slack. Chapter 2 Pole Layout The frame transport bags are labeled on the outside of each bag. The labels show the contents, the loaded weight, and the number of personnel required to lift it. The medium MGPTS Type 3 requires one end pole bag and one mid pole bag. Locate the side poles. The side poles are round, 7 feet long, and are not adjustable. Make sure that each side pole has two guy ropes attached to the cap assembly. Place one of these side poles at each corner of the tent. Place the cap assembly spindle through the 1.5 inch web pole loop at the eave. Separate the guy ropes on the side poles so that they are not twisted. Next, locate the two end poles. End poles are double D poles with flat sides and are adjustable from 7 feet to 9 feet. Adjust them to the maximum height by pulling the pin out and extending the lower leg. Push the pin back in when the locking holes are aligned. Place these poles at the ends of the tent. The corner poles should be aligned with the fabric seam at the end section of the roof. This is important for staking. Place the cap assembly spindle through the one and a half inch web loop at each end of the tent. The tent is now prepared for staking. Chapter 3 Staking the Tent The 36-inch wood stakes need to be driven at all corner, end, and side pole positions. Place the stakes one foot up from the base and one foot to either side of the pole. Repeat this procedure for all the corner poles. For the two end poles, place the stakes one foot from the bottom edge of the top leg and one foot on each side. It is important to remember to measure from the bottom of the outer pole and not from the bottom of the pole when it is extended. For the stakes located on the sides of the tent, a corner pole should be used to properly locate the stakes by using the following procedure. A pair of stakes will be located for each web loop located on the sides of the tent. Place a corner pole at each web loop facing away from the tent, then place a stake one foot on each side from the end of the corner pole. Repeat this procedure for each stake pair on the side of the tent.
After you have finished, return the corner pole to where it was originally placed, aligned with the fabric seam. Drive the stakes into the ground, angled slightly away from the tent. Only drive the stakes in as far as necessary for the ground conditions. Do not drive the stakes all the way into the ground. That way the stakes can be removed later. Refer to the technical manual for proper staking requirements based on soil conditions. Chapter 4 The Internal Arch Assembly Locate the folding arch assemblies and the leg assemblies. Extend the leg assemblies to their full height by pulling the pin out and pulling the lower leg out until the locking holes are aligned. Push the pin back in. Make sure that your fingers don't get caught in the folding arch hinge points. Unfold the folding arch arms by pulling the locking pin out, then rotate the arms until the locking hole is aligned. Then push the locking pin back in. Place one leg into each arm to form one complete internal arch assembly. Now repeat these procedures for the other two internal arch assemblies. Unclip the carabiner with the guy rope assemblies from the frame leg, and then clip the carabiner to a side web loop. Repeat for all six carabiners. Place the guy ropes over the stakes, making sure that the ropes are not twisted. Loosen the rope adjustment to leave plenty of slack. This will make it easier to stand the poles up. Connect the guy ropes at all stake locations. The tent is now ready to be raised. Chapter 5. Raising the Tent Do not stand on the fabric while raising the tent. Two persons are required. Start at one corner. One person lifts the corner roof fabric while the second person takes the pole and rotates the bottom under the roof fabric. Stand the pole up so that the bottom of the pole is angled in toward the center of the tent. Snug the guy ropes by sliding the tensioner to keep the poles from falling. Repeat this procedure for all the corner poles. Stand the end poles up by using the following procedures. One person lifts the roof fabric. The other person grasps the pole, rotates the bottom of the pole under the roof fabric, and stands the pole up so that the bottom of the pole is angled slightly in towards the center of the tent. Important! Place the flat side of the end pole towards the tent so that the guy ropes slide freely through the ring at the top. Now repeat this procedure for the other end pole. Do not tighten the ropes at this time. It will make it easier to erect the rest of the tent. Chapter 6. Installing the Arches Roll up one 9-foot long sidewall of the tent. Use tie straps at the eave to secure the rolled up section. You are now ready to install the internal arches. Now using four people, carry one completed internal arch assembly into the tent. First, identify the peak fittings, which are metal tubes attached to flat metal plates located on the inside roof of the tent. Use care to make sure your fingers aren't pinched while inserting the peak fittings on the tent into the peak fitting holders on the arch. Starting at one end of the tent, place a peak fitting into a peak holder. Once the first peak fitting is fully inserted into the first peak holder, place the second peak fitting into the other peak holder. This is important. 
If the fabric tension is too tight to place the second peak holder into the second peak fitting, release tension on the end poles to slacken the tent fabric. To keep the frame from separating from the tent in windy conditions, tie off the peak fitting to the frame with the rope provided. Tie the rope from the tent to a frame spacer bolt. To raise the first arch, locate two people at the center of the frame and one person at each leg. The two people at the center of the frame push the frame up while at the same time working down the sides of the frame. While the two people in the center are pushing the frame up, each person at the side will walk the leg to a vertical position. All four persons will be raising the arch when the arch is nearly upright. As the frame arches are being raised, have one person guide the fabric over each roller assembly at the eave while also raising the frame assembly. For the second and third arch, position two persons at each leg after placing the peak fittings into the peak holders and raise each arch to an upright position. From one end and from each side of the tent, view the internal arches and make sure that the legs are aligned. Chapter 7 Tensioning the Tent Corners should be tensioned first. Tension one corner at a time. This is a two-person task. Start at a corner. Position yourselves between the stakes and the pole. One person grasps the tensioner and rocks back towards the stake, keeping the base of the pole in place while the other slides the tensioner down the guy rope. Please refer to the technical manual for proper procedures. Repeat this procedure on the other three corners, the carabiner guy rope assemblies on the sides, and the end poles until the entire tent is tensioned. Now go into the tent. It is important that each frame arch assembly is still vertical, adjusted if necessary, and that all frame legs are in the inside perimeter of the tent. It may be necessary to push the leg in to achieve this. Chapter 8 Securing the Side Walls the side walls of the tent must now be secured using the following procedures. First, starting at the top of a sidewall section, attach the fabric sections together with hook and pile fasteners. Second, pull the wind straps on the side walls through the slits on the corresponding wall sections. Next, connect the two web and plastic buckle assemblies that are located between these wind ties. Pull the wind ties through the slit opening in the outer flap. Then, tie off the wind straps with an appropriate knot to keep the fabric sections tightly together. Repeat this procedure for the remaining wind ties.
Finally, starting at the top of the sidewall sections, connect the four buckles on the outer flap. Repeat these procedures for all remaining sidewall sections. Chapter 9 Staking the Perimeter Locate the 12 inch plastic stakes. Next, locate the rope loops facing out from the bottom of the sidewalls. Twist the rope loop to form a figure eight. Then fold the front loop over the back loop. Insert the stake through both loops and drive the stake into the ground, leaving it about two inches out. This will make it easier to remove. Repeat these procedures for all remaining perimeter positions. This completes the setup of the Eureka MG PTS Type 3 tent.